Wow, kia ora, kia ora tato katoa, and how's everyone going? Welcome back to another edition of Where Are They Now? Not bad, fellas. We're at video number 46. So 46 and, um, you know, gone really well. Only five days to go now to uh, we catch up again. Um, some of the boys coming down on Friday, some coming, uh, I think majority coming down on, on Saturday. Um, so it's not long to go. So at the end of the week, We'll be able to catch up, spin a few yarns, tell a few lies, have a few beers and catch up with everyone, um, you know, and for some, uh, it's been, you know, nearly 30 years since we've seen uh, each other. And our next guest, friend and fellow classmate, fellow old boy, I haven't seen in uh, nearly 30 years, so 28 years, um, and he's a, uh, a fantastic uh, late addition to um, committing to come down and um, it's just so awesome to have him here tonight and we'll see him at the weekend. I have the fondest memories of this fella, um, very popular border um, and a great little rugby player. Uh, he adorned the number nine jersey and, and wore it very well at Silverstream. Um, he's made a career in education for over 20 years, now teaching at a great school in Havelock North in the Hawke's Bay called uh, Herewith, which is a wonderful uh, school, over 100 years. Um, I had a quick look online and it's got a, um, a lot of tradition, beautiful grounds, a little bit like Silverstream uh, and a wonderful group of, um, of boarders there as well and a really big stretch uh, from the early years right through to year 13. So no doubt we'll hear a little bit about that from um, our, our fellow old boy. So look, straight into it, it's time to say a massive hello and kia ora to your friend and mine. We're going to see him at the weekend. It's hi to Scotty J, Scott Jensen. Hey, brother. Uh, hey, mate. How you going? Yeah, awesome. And um, like we just said before, mate, it's great to see you. I haven't seen you in ages. And I know the boys are just going to be stoked to both see you, hear what you've been up to all these years. So thanks very much for one, for joining us. And thanks for making that commitment to come down to the dinner on Saturday. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Ah, awesome, Scotty. Well, you're looking well, mate. You're looking like you can you can still put that number nine jersey on. Oh, the body's slowly packing up, you know. So <laughs> it's keeping up with these younger fellas now. So that's uh, getting harder and harder each year, I must admit. Oh, awesome, mate. Well, once again, thanks for joining us. Let's get straight into it, Scotty. Um, Take us back to when you came to Silverstream initially. So, of course, 1989. Tell us a little bit about where you came from, how many years you, you stayed at school for, and like most of us, sort of your first sort of memories of Stream. Uh, you were a boarder, so obviously you'll, you'll have some memories of the boarding hostel. Take us back to sort of where it all began. Yeah, well, I came from a little tiny primary school in central Hawke's Bay. I think we had probably the peak of its role was about 80 kids. So probably about 60 something when I was there, you know, half a dozen year eights or form two as it was called then. And um, so it was a bit of a shock to go to move three hours away or over that and then straight into boarding. Um, yeah, it was definitely a bit of a shock at just the sheer size of the place. And then um, I have to board and I don't, I think I got home once in term one and that was a whole, whole term. So probably took me six months to really find my feet before I actually um, felt comfortable in the place. Um, by then I'd been caned lots and probably whipped into shape. So um, yeah, yeah. So it, that's wow. that's where I came from. And I stayed five years and boarded the um, five years. So yeah. Wow. And of yeah. course, I think you mentioned you might have been in Bay 8 in your, in your third form year. Is that right? Yes, but Bay 8. Yeah, Dave Wallace. Um, I think I think was I the closest bid to him, or it might have been Neasy in one corner and Corker over the other side. There's only three of us plus um, Dave Wallace here. So um, yes, we we tried to keep on the good side of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Quite a yeah. few boys have spoken about Dave and and their memories of him. Yeah. Um, and of course, later on in life, a, a lot of our guys have caught up with him. Um, out of school, yeah. and you know, um, Dave's going to be at the dinner, so uh, it'd be great for um, for you to catch up with him there too. Um, now, what yeah. did? Um, yeah, yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Now, did, I'm not sure if you've seen um, 
or formerly Bro Beads um, video yet. Um, he, he was quite crucial. Now watch that, yes. Yeah, he was quite um, influential for all of us, but especially the boarders. Yeah, you have some fond memories of, of him, of course. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, he was he was like your parent, really. Um, you didn't have your parent to those days. You could, if you're lucky, to get on a phone once every few weeks to ring home. So um, he was, yeah, you really respected him and look, he looked after us. He had his own way of um, disciplining us, but his own way also of, of being a you know, pretty pretty cool parent. You know, he, he knew when to be strict on us and when to just give us a bit of space and let us be boys. So, um, yeah, I've, I learned a lot from him, actually, and I've probably just the way he treated us, and um, that's helped me quite a bit with uh, the borders and the, and, and the boys I deal with now quite a bit in my job. So, yeah, yeah no, yeah. be very fond me memories of him yeah oh that's wonderful yeah. i'm sure he'll love to hear those words when he watches this yeah. later on now scotty J, you played rugby you were a very good rugby player uh represented our school in the first 15 in that coveted nine jersey did you play any rugby um post post um silver stream yeah i played quite a bit actually um played i went to massey the first year out of school um did a some sort of agriculture i grew up on a dairy farm so i thought i might as well give that a crack but this, the course didn't go so well but um played in a pretty good under 19 side at varsity and, and michael stack was in that i think from memory okay um and then i moved back to wellington um uh, the course wasn't for me um and i went to cit for a couple of years um and did a diploma in I think it was exercise science yep. so basically becoming a personal trainer or someone in that sort of sports industry um, and played for Huddle Boys Maris for a couple of years. Um, I think I played with Jake Smith and Corker and all that again. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and then had another year in the Colts there as well, two years in the Colts at Huddle Boys. And the second year it might have had, definitely had a lot of boys from St Bernard's first 15, um, might have had Noel Mackey in it and Boys like that. I'm, I'm struggling to remember now, but a lot of St. Bernard's boys. Um, we had a couple of good good years in the Colts, yeah. So after that, played a bit of senior rugby in Army when I went back for Teachers College. Uh, played for Marist and Varsity, um, and then over Wanganui for Marist. So yeah, play, played a bit. Most, a lot, lot of senior rugby, no rep stuff or anything. Um, I think I made the Wellington Colts team, but it was the B team, Colts B. Um, it might have been picked out of the under 21 grade or something. It wasn't the, the top side. It was like the second side. Yeah. Oh, good so on that you. was about as far as I went there. Yeah, yeah. Well done, mate. Yeah. Now, you've already answered the next question and sort of what you did immediately after that. And you obviously just said to Massey and CIT, which a lot of our boys uh, did also. Um, now, education. I mean, you've been doing it now for well over 20 years. What, what drew you towards becoming a teacher? I think out of that diploma in exercise science I did, I didn't really enjoy working in gyms. So I ended up running a like a holiday program with kids, sports sort of program um, in Wellington, um, just one summer or it must have been over the summer holidays or something. And then it's like quite enjoyed that. So um, enrolled Teachers College and headed back Army Way. So for three years. Um, and did my um, degree there. So yeah, I think that was probably the catalyst for it. I I'd always had thought maybe a PE teaching, but for some reason or, art or another, I'd never gone that way. Um, I don't know why, but um, as it happens, I've ended up at the school I'm at as a specialist PE teacher. And I did a couple of years just as the PE teacher as well. Oh, wow. So let's talk about your current job. So that's at, uh, at the school I mentioned at, at, at here with. So, so how long have you been here in, in, yep. in what age kids do you teach? Um, so I started the about 2008. So I, I think I've done about 12 years here. I've had a couple of years away in between, just a, a break. Um, but I, I teach year six at the moment. So that's what would be standard four in the old sort of talk. Uh, I was going to ask yeah. you that. So standard four. Yep. So they're yep. sort of last standard year before, four. before they go into what we would have known as intermediate. Yeah, but we have intermediate as well. So I, the, the rugby team I coach is probably more the, the Form 1 and Form 2 boys. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Um, tell us about the school. Um, similarities between 
uh, Hereworth and, and, and Silverstream? Yeah, it is like a little mini Silverstream really with a boarding house and it's boys only. Um, yeah, big fields, big grounds, um, real focus on sport and, um, and the cultural side as well. Um, really strong choir and all that sort of stuff. So getting boys into heaps of different stuff. But yeah, it's really similar to, I guess, what Silverstream was like. And we all do boarding duty, all the staff. So, you know, I think having been at Stream sort of helped me out, sort of knew the ropes a bit, a bit more than um, other staff who'd come from other schools <laughs> around. Yeah. Hey, and how, how's, yeah. the, how's the food there compared to how we had it? Oh, a, a lot better than, than the old days, yeah. Yeah, they don't know how good they've got it. They probably still think it's bad, but yeah. Right. It's, it's, yeah, it's pretty good. So do you stay at school or do you live elsewhere? I live a couple of k's away, yeah. So um, in my house, in Havel, it's in Havelock North, so I live in Havelock. Um, yep. Wonderful. Yeah, not too far from school. Beautiful yeah. place, former home of the fantastic um, Happy Tav. As it was called back in the day. Yes, absolutely. It's been bold now, though. It's gone. <laughs> yep, yep. A lot of the boys will have memories of um, coming up to the Bay Ball or or, or whatever it was, and and right. and, and yeah. frequenting the um yeah. the mighty the mighty Happy Tav. All right, Scotty, tell us about your family. Yeah. Um, are you married, and and do you have children? And if so, please introduce them to us. Yep, been married for I think about seventeen years. Um. And got two kids. My son's in fourth form, and he's at Lindisfarne College. You might have heard of that college. Absolutely, um, the home of yep. Tane, Tane Randall and John Timmer yep. and, and and many others. Yeah. Um, so he's there, and my daughter is third form, and she's at Havelock North High School, just which is only just down the road from from here, so she can walk each day. So wonderful. Um, and my wife was a teacher for nearly twenty years, and she's now doing real estate. So she works for Harcourts oh, here in Havelock. A familiar industry I know well. That's wonderful. I lost the feed, I think, Huge. That's all right. You still with me? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, good, yeah. mate. Yeah, look, we, we have, for those watching, just be aware. Yeah, I'm got, still with you, mate. We've got a little just bit the of a... just frozen, but that's fine. Yeah, it looks like we've got a little bit of a delay um, but I might tell us. my son to get off the internet. That's what it'll be. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like, I feel like I'm going live to Tokyo at the Olympics with a little bit of a I'll delay. just tell him. I'll be back in a moment. Okay. There you go, guys. Uh, just a little bit of a delay there. So Scotty J is going to go tell his son to uh, to get off the gaming or whatever he's on. Right. I'm back there, mate. I'm just telling him to get off the, <laughs> obviously <laughs> online and it's stuffing up the feed. Yeah. Oh, no worries. Well, um, look, just staying with your family, I think you mentioned your wife was a teacher. She's in real estate now. Um, how, look, how was real estate up, up your way in, in the Hawks Bay? Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, slowed down. She obviously, she started sort of just before COVID. So what well, wasn't an easy start, um, probably about six months before that. So, but she's found her feet now and um, she's, yeah, she's done well, she's holding her own. She's earning as much as she would teaching at this stage. So oh, good on um, you. she's only been in it two years. So, yeah, I think she's enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. good, good, good. And look, Linda's fun. Yeah. Tell us about that. I, I, it's great school. Um, what was a, what yeah. made the decision for you to send your son to Linda's fun? Oh, the school I'm at, a lot of the boys sort of head on there afterwards. It's kind of a natural progression really they'll either go Linda's Farn or they might head to somewhere like um, Napier Boys or Wanganoo Collegiate um, so it, it's I'm at a private this boys private school and uh, yeah they tend to I'd say 50% of the boys from my school go to Linda's Farn and you know my son Keegan went through the school I'm at so he it's where he really desperately wanted to go yeah, um, but yeah, probably for us it was there or Napier Boys for him. So yeah, quite lucky. Ended up. Quite lucky. A lot of good schools up up that way. Yeah, a lot of lot of schools and and have lot north. Yeah, um, and Hawks Bay. Yeah, yeah, heaps of big boys schools and 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 some good co-ed schools as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's take it yeah. back to stream. Um, you'll have yep. heaps. You have heaps of memories. You did the full five years there. 
and, and lots of memories as a border, of course. But look, have you got some uh, memories that have stuck with you all this time that you just haven't been able to shake that you you, you can share with, with the guys? Or ones that yeah, really stuck well, with? listening to some of the other videos, um, yeah, some of the people brought lots of them up. Obviously, um, the dining room raids, I remember really well that people <laughs> mentioned. Um, I remember going on a few of those actually with Troy Wally. Um, and, and then... Um, obviously Fooey's motorbike incident and things like that. Um, but one sort of, I don't think anyone or a couple that people haven't mentioned. Um, one, I remember a group of us getting in quite a bit of trouble. I think it was around my birthday in October. We got some flagons somewhere down by the tote and we went into Trentham Memorial Park. Um, it was a group of about six of us. I'm struggling to think it might have been Blues and Fooey and I was maybe... There. It might have been you, yes. Yep. And, and we sat at a picnic table and we drank, drank all these flagons, played some drinking games, but that what wasn't the problem. It was when we got back to school, a couple of us got caught. I think I remember Bede coming coming into the dorm with Blues in a headlock saying, if Blues is drunk, Jensen, you're, you obviously are, or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, well, we got in a bit of trouble anyway. We got, I think we got, I have this memory that we got the... Um, option of six canes or 40 hours of detentions or something like that and I remember taking the 40 hours detention because I just don't think I could have done six canes I'd had four before and that was about my limit I think so um, yeah I just remembered that took us about two weeks to do 40 hours of detentions and we just did hard labor in the gardens and drove the tractor around and whatnot so that's yeah. one thing I can remember. Yeah. I remember that too, Scotty. I took the 40 hours yeah. too. I remember walking yeah. back towards yeah. school and we took the back route like along the river, along all those yeah, flash, right. ho flash houses. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then that's when <laughs> a couple of detours happened. And uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, no, geez, that's, yeah. I think Bryce was. Yeah, because that was actually my birthday. I remember it. Um, it wasn't a, a good ending, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. And the other memory I have is, I mean, I was quite into that when I first started. Um, the first 15 were like all blacks to me, and it was only made sort of more intense by, I think, Mannix making the all blacks a year or two later. Um, so I, I remember if there was a college match on that night, we got a video or like a, they put a big screen up in the assembly hall, which I believe is now the library. Yep. Um, and we'd sit there and watch a movie. We didn't have to do study that night or homework that night. And we'd just lie on the stage or out in the, somewhere and just, I remember, was it rather Jeff or someone up behind playing these movies on this big reel? And it took you about 10 minutes before you could actually hear it because the sound was funny, but then your ears got used to it. But I can remember that quite well. Yeah. So. Wow. Um, yeah. That's good yeah. memories. They really made a big deal yeah. of, um, of college, yeah. matches, didn't they? I can't remember as if they won or if or if it was just any time they played, but um midweek. So yeah, it was I looked forward to those movies. It was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you've seen um um some of the videos on, on the YouTube channel. You know, we're we're in the mid 40s now and and a bit of a banter that's been going on on the Facebook um messenger page. What do you think, mate, of sort of retouching with a few guys oh. and hearing a few different things and just, you know, it's been a long time, eh? It's awesome, mate. It's awesome. It's I've always wondered. I mean, yeah, I've been pretty poor at keeping in touch with most people. Um, and my life's gone in sort of different directions all the time. I've been overseas quite a bit. Uh, well, initially, I taught over there for a couple of years. And then a couple of years ago, not in the recent past, I, I think it was 2017, um, I was in the islands teaching as well. So, yeah, I've sort of bounced around and... but. Um, but haven't got back to Wellington sort of much to catch up with crew. And of course, people are all over the place now, but. Um, yeah, well, we can re remedy yeah. that at the weekend. Hey, but yes. um, tell us about that. So you, where did you teach? What islands in particular? Uh, so so I did teach in the UK quite a, at the start of my career, but um, went to Vanuatu wow. in 2017. So it took it. I'd been at my school that I'm at for a while. So I took a job over there at, at Port Vila International School and the whole family, you know, my wife taught there and my kids went to the school. Wow, what um, an awesome experience. So that was pretty cool, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. quite enjoy surfing and diving and that sort of thing. Um, So 
it was a perfect sort of place to live for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Now I remember you and uh, Bloom and Blues were um, were close. Uh, at school. Have, did, have you kept in touch over the years at all with, with uh, Blues? We did for a while. Um, he was a groomsman at my wedding and I was a groomsman at his wedding and I, but I actually think the last time I saw him I was just trying to think I think he had a red wine in his hand and it was as I left my wedding. <laughs> so <laughs> we were talking 17 years ago Yeah. Um, and then I've kept in touch a little bit but then we kind of lost, I'd say in the last decade we've lost touch. Um, yeah. Um, it wasn't until Boz said he'd talk to him recently that I thought, oh, geez, you can hopefully get the details off Boz this weekend and get back in touch with him. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's right, because, you know, all of us have taken different um, tracks in life, of course, uh, and it's just great that this forum has allowed um, most of us just to just to reconnect and, and just to say, yeah. hey, and, hey, and just see, just see what, what, what you're up to. Now, remind me, I'm pretty sure, were you on our seventh form PE trip? No, well, I should have been, but but um, I I think we must have had the cross country a couple of days before, and I um I started puking up during it, and I got a really really bad tummy bug and uh, like some gastro bug, and I was in the inf- I was so gutted, I was in the infirmary all week and missed the thing. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh shame. Mm-hmm. Now we've got a number of boys, of course, who are stuck in Australia, who can't join us, um, which is a real shame. But um, you never know. In the next few years, we'll we'll be able to catch up, perhaps even go over there if we keep some momentum yep. up. Um, look, who are you looking forward to catching up with this weekend? Anyone in particular? Oh, heaps heaps of guys. Um, you know, Colin Hancock. I you know I'd love to have a chat to him. Um, seen him in a while. Um, Mike Byrne. I, I mean, his story was really interesting. Yeah. Um, I've had a couple of health scares my um, self, so um, I think we could compare notes pretty closely. <laughs> oh well, anything serious, um, Scotty? Yeah, well, I, I did have a cancer in my twenties. Um, oh wow! Really, oh, I would have been 21, 22, but I, it, look, as soon as I was, knew I had it, I was. They'd already told me that you're going to recover, you'll be fine. So it wasn't so much a scare as just something I had to deal with at the time. It was a pretty quick recovery. But I, I mean, I still have checkups for that once a year sort of thing. And then um, I had radiotherapy treatment at the time. Um, um, it was when I was at Teachers College, actually. And then um, about two years ago, I had a pretty big scare. I was out surfing and um, well, I had a heart attack, um, which for someone who's pretty fit and healthy was a real shock. So um, I was wow. out surfing. I was about 100 metres offshore and had to get myself. I, I kind of thought. I knew something wasn't right, and then I thought that actually this is real bad. And then, because my arm was a bit funny, I, I thought that's what it was. Um, I did, you know, one of the symptoms that I was kind of aware of. And um, yeah, just managed to get to shore because there's no one around me that I could sort of yell out to. Yeah. And um, yeah, I got rushed to Wellington on a plane, and um, the helicopter was too. The weather was too bad for the helicopter, so. Um, and then, yeah, cardiac, full cardiac arrest and everything in the plane and just made it to Wellington. Um, wow. And So we're talking, yeah, the full, be, we're talking the full Monty here. So in the full, yep, the old everything, yep. Um, so, you know, they could, sort of couldn't work out why that had happened for someone who's reasonably healthy, but um, it turns out it's most likely was my cancer treatment. Might have sort of somehow nicked the edge of the heart, the radiotherapy, and, and caused a little bit of damage, which might have caused a blockage. Um, yeah, so listening to Mike's story was interesting, you know, for, for me hearing that, but yep. he, I think he's had a much harder recovery. Look, I had nine days off teaching and I was back teaching, so. Wow. Well, thank you for yeah. sharing that, mate, and I'm so glad yeah. that you're all good. Yeah. Um, I'm no, I'm good now, and I'm yeah. back surfing and back, Back, I do a lot of mountain biking and that sort of thing, but um, yeah, oh, it, wow. it was a real shock. I, I think what was it, April two years ago? So yep. yeah, oh yep. wow, well, it was a big well, one. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like it. Um, but yeah, like yeah. I said, mate, you look really well and you sound yep. good. So I'm glad that you're um, obviously um, um, still with us. Now, do you still keep in yep. touch with anyone from from stream? Um, I have a, I I, I see. Uh, Barry O'Sullivan a bit, hey, like oh, yeah. what, a couple of times a year because he's around Havelock and Tumu Timbers and 
um, I have a, we have a dinner with a group of people and he's at that once a year. It's actually this Saturday, um, so I've had to cancel that. <laughs> um, but that's high, fine. High, um, higher priority, Scotty. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and then I've seen Brendan around a couple of times. I, I think his son's actually coming to the school I'm at next year. Um, but regularly, no, not really. Um, but see the odd person around, yeah. Um, I, I've got a, a guy, I don't know if you remember a guy, Greg Driscoll. Yes. His, his son's in my class yep. this year. So I've had, like, taught some people's sons who went through stream, not our year, but uh, yep. Amit Mullock, his son came through our school. Oh, Amit, a successful um, barrister over in Melbourne. I yeah, think. yeah. So I think he's gone overseas now, but his son came through. Our school, yeah. So, oh, nice. Yeah. So, oh. yeah, I bump into people, yeah, reasonably often, but don't really keep in touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, sounds like most, like most of us. All right, Scotty. Yeah. Well, look, we're at the end. Um, look, wonderful catch up, and of course, we, we can carry this on um, at, at the weekend. But the boys, we're going to release this video tonight, and they'll they'll all be watching it. Have you got a, a wee message to the rest of the guys, perhaps the guys over in Australia that can't join us and, and all the rest of the boys that are what you got a wee message from Scotty J? Oh, I'm just really looking forward to catching up. Um, you know, uh, it, it will be cool. And hopefully from there, um, you know, I was quite jealous when a group of them said they play golf once a year. It sounded like a great idea, but something, you know, it'd be cool to just um, regain ties and then potentially catch up with people more regularly. So, um, yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Well said. Well, there you go, guys. Um, our mate, uh, Scotty J, fantastic to hear from him. And again, you know, um, like a few of our boys have, have, have had a wee health scare and and managed to um, 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 to pull through that. And, um, mate, thank you so much for joining us, Scotty. It sounds like you're doing really well in education at that wonderful school in Havelock. Give my best to your wife and tell her to persist and keep trucking on in real estate. You've, it's a tough industry, but if you persist, 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 you'll do okay. Yeah. Ladies, uh, guys, fantastic to have our mate. Scotty J, thanks for joining us. See you at the weekend. Cheers. See you later, guys.